Greetings to you, my beloved friends in Christ. We meet again during this time of worship. I want to welcome you to this service, which is hosted by the Richmond and Hounslow Circuit in the London District. It is Pentecost Sunday today, and today we welcome the Holy Spirit. On this day, the disciples were gathered in one place. Tongues of fire fell and rested upon them. The Holy Spirit had come. On this day, the church was born. And today, God is still pouring out his Spirit to comfort us, to teach us, to guide us, and empower us to share the good news. So friends, I welcome you, and now may we open our hearts to God in worship. Today I'm going to be reading Psalm um, 51, chapters 10 to 12. Curate in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Amen. Today I'm reading Romans chapter 8 verses 14 through to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. Here ends the reading.
dear brothers and sisters, today's Pentecost, and we must talk about the Holy Spirit. This is a very hard subject to dwell on, but on the other hand, is also a very exciting theme. I've been always very fascinated by its power in the world. I've been like many, or some of you, I guess, a witness of the power of the Holy Spirit. I saw him acting in the church, especially through the preaching, but also outside of our church premises, especially in the communities, in the most unthinkable places where the word of God was not even expected. By the way, there is an experience of my life I want to share with you, and this is going to make this sermon a bit different from the others. Years ago, when I was still in Italy doing my studies, I worked in a camp with a large group of refugees for five months. I will not mention now where they came from. This is not important. My sister and I were still studying theology and we needed to do a meaningful experience to serve God outside of our, we can say, inter interminable studies. So one day we arrived in this camp and we found nervous, angry people that experienced war. They must have had a very tough time. I could not blame them at all. Bea and I merely cooked in that camp, but we had plenty of other responsibilities given to us or simply chosen by us, felt by us. One of our duty was to organize the cleaning shifts. This did not get a great response, especially by the men who did not want to do a women's job. Even the women supported this idea. One day I was pushed violently on the floor by a big guy. The following night, another man with a very loud voice violently kicked the door of the living room that was locked in the night only because he wanted to make a call, leaving a crack on the door. A problem was also the boundary of the language. We did not speak theirs, and most of them did not speak ours. So another evening at dinner time, still in the beginning of our days there, something else happened. My sister got a chair on her face, and after that a few punches from a woman just because of a misunderstanding. And to intervene, to stop that, I got a punch myself. At lunchtime, I can never forget one day, we could grill aubergines. I gathered that the guests were not used to such a food, such a thing, because they all came towards us while we were eating and put their trays on our table, saying something in their language with a face that was not even hinting a smile. One more little bad memory that I want to share with you was loud voices during our common meals saying only one word, bread, 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 until we decided to stand up and serve them. So the situation was becoming worse and worse and extremely unbearable for us, believe me. I often found myself closing the toilet or my room crying and asking God why he sent us there, why I had to live with fear to be myself and say what it was right. Plus I was not able to rebel. And one day I understood that I, we needed help, a proper help. And I remember my daddy, a minister, who in several occasions said these words. When you are in trouble, before anybody else, ask God for help. When you are in trouble, before anybody else, ask God for help. In that awkward situation, I decided to follow his advice. Then I asked the Lord to intervene, to help these people to live their future with a peaceful heart and to help my sister and I as well to be compassionate and patient in that situation, in that experience where we work 10 hours a day among suffering and anger. We also knew some had nightmares about the war, while others spent time crying, thinking about the lost beloved. We were the only volunteers sleeping next to their rooms. The director was in the last floor in her own apartment. I talked to God about that suffering and the diversity of the, of the culture and the language. There was a massive problem between us. In my conversation with God, I told him that Bea and myself really wanted to establish a good relationship with his brothers and sisters. That we left the north of Italy, where we lived at that time, to go to the south, 
to offer a practical help, a practical service to him and to the others, to love and work with joy. But my main question was how? How, God, can this happen? I remember I started to read the Bible and pray three times a day with method, as John Wesley would say. I can never forget the strength received from those Bible readings and those prayers. In the early morning, I sat in front of the window with closed eyes. The light of God seemed to come from the sky straight on me. I could feel an energy, almost like, like a wind, on all my body, starting from my hands. Dear brothers and sisters, I received incredible strength to face all that. I am sure my fears went away completely because of the help of the Holy Spirit. Act in me, and hear why joy and energy guided my steps. One evening, I gathered all the guests, and for the first time, something happened. I explained them why Bea and myself went there, and how excited we were to share that experience of solidarity with them. We also told them that we wanted to learn about their culture, and Bea spoke about the common responsibility that we should have shared in that place. Little by little, believe it or not, the men, the men started to work and to do their cleaning without any complaint. And the women began to understand that we loved them and came towards us with smiles. Little by little, with patience and love. Oh, what a beautiful memory. We established a good relationship with the women and we taught them how to take care of themselves, for example. In the beginning, they neglected the way they were dressing or looking, while the men were always clean and well-dressed. We taught them to have care of their body, of themselves, how to put makeup and use shoes instead of slippers. We brushed their long hair and made plaits, ponytails, flowers on their hair. We had evening's appointments, to chat and do things together. Bea and I, as well, were able to understand their hearts much better from those talks. And also thanks to the drawing of the kids, who represented, for instance, people escaping from a bombed home or a vagon train for six people with 23 people instead when they were, they were coming to our country, or drawing who showed very bright blood paddle around bodies. Dear brothers and sisters, so this is a piece of my life where I could see the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. I think we cannot explain what the Holy Spirit is if we do not start from the experience of our own life, from the testimony. And this, I think, is something that perhaps we have lost in our churches that is more attributed to the evangelical churches. And I am sure some of you could tell other involving moments where you believe God was present with this transforming power. The Holy Spirit, as I said, can be experimented in the church, but also outside of it and in ourselves. The Holy Spirit can revitalize our conscience, our heart. The Holy Spirit can awake again all our senses, can give you strength that you can never imagine. It can penetrate your unconscious, give life to your body. The Holy Spirit can make us rediscover ourselves and find energy that was missing before. It is from the Holy Spirit that a new power, a vital energy, can start. The Holy Spirit can transform situations that seem unbearable and can make us see positive things where you felt that only negativity was present before. The Holy Spirit is free and can act as He wants and where He wants and when He wants. Never think that the Holy Spirit acts only through Christians, only through men, only through heterosexuals, only through ministers. We cannot put any boundary on it. We cannot give limits to it. The Holy Spirit that is God is free, completely free, like the wind, the Ruach. We cannot chain him in any way. 
how could we only dare to do so? The Holy Spirit cannot be succubus, dominated by our mentality, our ideas, and our constraints. The Holy Spirit goes past even our confession, as I said. If we consider other religions members of this wide communion of God, we must leave the communion of the Spirit deeply, without presumption to be superior only because we are Christians. I like to mention it again. Only when we recognize God as the one complete different from us, we can be conscious and aware of him in us. The psalmist, the psalmist are the example of the individual interior experience of the spirit. For example, the Psalm 51, the main passage for me today, says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. But the Holy Spirit is not only our own experience of God, but the revelation of God in us. That's why he can transform things as well through us. The gift of the Spirit comes from God, bright face, addresses to us. In the book of Ezekiel, the people of Israel say, I am a new heart and the new spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, looking at the situation we are living right now with the coronavirus, they keep us locked down in the fear of getting ill and die, with the fright of a serious economical crisis in our countries, all things that could make us doubt about the love of God, we do not have to think that his Holy Spirit is far away, is absent. Does not act, because even in this painful situation, the signs of his presence and action are not missing. Don't you think that the Holy Spirit has been visible in many ways? What about the generosity, the friendship, the sharing, the solidarity, the reciprocal and disinterested help, especially the support for the lonely and the elderly and the neighbors, even unknown to us? Are not all these things the signs of the action of God who fulfills the miracle to transform us all with his Holy Spirit? The Lord who transforms believers or non-believers in people with a strong sense of humanity, not only worried about ourselves, but people sensitive as never before and open to the problems of others. Now, finally, dear friends, may we continue express, to express, feel this sense of solidarity for strangers as well in this difficult time. Also, when our present will be past, may we keep looking on our neighbor as we are doing now. And finally, let us ask God, help us to maintain our humanity, our sensitiveness for others and the whole world. We all pray you, Lord, with the words of David. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we ask you for the gift of your Holy Spirit to help us to pray. Our Father, help us to walk at your presence quietly without embarrassment. Guide our thoughts, our path, and direct our actions so that we can feel at home with you and be witness of your love in our daily life. The road of many is not easy now. You know the names, the hearts, and the thoughts of each of your children. There are stones, obstacles, but you promise to give us your Holy Spirit true courage, perseverance, and commitment. Guide us, Lord, 
so that we can help as we can with all our possibilities and strength. Those who need us, we ask you to keep your spirit in our hearts and to be with who are weak, who are ill, who cannot cope on their own, those known to us or hidden from our look. Holy Spirit, we pray for those who have died, those who lives are attacking by sorrow and mourning, but we want to pray also for our church that needs you to offer testimony and mission. Give us all the faith we need to overtake fears, to value diversity. May we walk with confidence and joy towards you so that our spirit thinks with your spirit. Our hearts love with your love. Our steps walk in your justice. Our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we put our hope and our trust in you. Amen. We approach God in prayer. Let us join in our prayer of adoration. Lord, we believe that you have called us here and we have come to hear the word of life and to respond to the truth of Jesus. By your Holy Spirit, transform our formal act of worship into a joyous celebration of your love. May our praises overflow with love as on the day of Pentecost. In the name of Jesus, may our worship honor you, here and everywhere and forever. We pray for the speaker today and those that are hearing God's word from near and afar, that may your Holy Spirit empower our praises for your glory and infuse our discipleship with the presence of the living Christ. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Lord, we confess that we have tried to worship you in our own strength and in ways that pleased us. We confess that though we seek to serve you, our commitment is stretched to the limit we confess that we have relied on ourselves and on what we do and hope that this would restore our relationship with you. We confess that we have tried in vain. Come, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, renew our whole lives. Come, Lord, transform us by your grace. Come, Lord, come that by your Spirit we may save you, know you and love you as our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, as we now come to the close of our worship, we come now before the throne of grace. We come before God as we receive the blessing. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and the works of God. And now the blessing of God, the Spirit, Son, and the Father remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world in the power of the Spirit to fulfill our high calling as servants of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.